Hey everyone, Cynix here, and today I just wanted to bring you guys a quick top 10 list. And I'm sorry if my voice is a little off, I have a bit of a cold. Anyway, these are going to be the top 10 artists that influenced me the most. So it's not the top 10 artists of all time or the top 10 artists that I currently love, but instead it's the top 10 artists that have had the biggest impact on my art since I started doing it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and find some inspiration along the way. And speaking of inspiration, a lot of these artists have been featured in my monthly inspiration series, but that series probably probably won't be appearing on my YouTube channel anymore. It was just too much work and never really caught on that well. I know a lot of you love it, so hopefully it will live on either through Twitter or Facebook or something else. All right, so let's get to it. Number 10 is Marko Djordjevic. I was really obsessed with his aggressive and dynamically detailed figures through most of my early years on conceptart.org. He was also extremely valuable to me as a wonderful example of being a self-trained, self-taught artist. I was trying to do art on my own, so seeing someone else make it was really helpful. Number 9 is going to be Arn, or Prometheus, or Nicholas Jansen, whatever name he wants to go by these days. Arn definitely seemed like one of the most analytical artists that I was following early on. Every time he shared an insight in art, it was always well thought out and interesting. I tried to absorb as much as I could from him because he always had such impeccable hues and lighting in all of his work. No matter how cartoony or realistic the content was, the color choices were always perfect. Number 8 is going to be Fang Zhu. Fang really helped showcase what a professional artist should be when I was starting out. I definitely learned a lot about presentation and workflow from looking at his work. But most importantly, and you probably didn't know this, Fang is indirectly responsible for me creating a YouTube channel. The first time I ever watched a recorded video of someone doing digital illustration was Fang's Nomen DVDs. They came out when YouTube was still in its infancy, and I immediately fell in love with the idea of watching someone paint while they talked about it. So watching those DVDs was definitely what led to me trying to record and commentate my own art stuff. Alright, number 7 is going to be a more recent influence, and it's Sergei Kolosov. You've heard me mention him a ton, but Sergei is an amazing artist, and his main influence on me is that his work really helped to remind me that art is all about storytelling, because every painting he does is dripping with narrative. And I think I'd gotten pretty lazy when it came to stuff like that, so it was a nice kick in the butt to remind me that art should always be telling a story. Plus, I love his workflow and his videos are amazing, so go look them up if you've never seen them. I think they're on Vimeo, but I'll make sure to post a link in the description below. Number 6 is another somewhat recent influence, and that's James Gurney. James Gurney is one of my favorite people to watch on YouTube, and his love for art and all things creative is just infectious. I hope someday I can become even half as wonderful an ambassador for art as he is. His color and lighting book is one of the best art books out there, and he's really helped shape my love for plein air painting as well. Alright, we're halfway through, and the next five have just been crazily influential on me. Number 5 is Wesley Burt, and I think out of everyone from my conceptart.org days, his sketchbook was the most impressive and amazing. It just always stuck in my head, and I absolutely fell in love with his design sense for how he does pages. He definitely represented the gold standard for what I hoped I could one day do in my own sketchbooks. They're still absolutely amazing as I look back at these images today. But that's not even all of it, because as a bonus influence, Wesley Bird actually had a huge influence on the type of music I was listening to. I would always be checking out any music he mentioned at any time, because he always seemed to have the coolest music taste of anyone I knew. So thank you, Wes, for exposing my younger self to all types of amazing music. Number four is going to be Sparth, and Sparth is simply amazing. He's one of the best early digital painters I was ever aware of. He was just light years beyond everyone else during the early days of digital painting, at least in my mind. I'm sure other people have different opinions. But I completely loved everything he was doing and everything he is still doing. He's always pushing the limit of digital painting style. I think I've mentioned it before, but Sparth is the main influence that got me into digital painting. And I'm not talking about digital coloring line work. I'm talking about straight digital painting without any lines or anything. 
He's also a huge factor in my undying love for sci-fi art. His design choices are always so good. Number three is definitely a mystery to most people, but it is Hardcore Pix or HPX or Philippe Guyenne. He was probably my most influential artist during all of my conceptart.org years. It's hard to sum up completely, and a lot of his work might look a little dated now, and he really dropped off the face of the earth as far as I know back in 2005. But in some ways, I feel like he is the most responsible for all of my artistic style. All of his lines were always just punching me in the face with how graphical they were. This is really when I first learned the importance of your lines having energy and emotion in them. My only wish is that I had a video of him painting because watching him digital paint was probably one of the most transformative things I ever watched. I still feel like he might be the fastest digital painter I've ever seen. He simply attacked the canvas and he had no interest whatsoever in being attached to any of his art. He turned a face into a spaceship into an environment in roughly 10 minutes, and it was the most ridiculous and amazing thing I've ever watched. Or it would have been the most ridiculous thing I've ever watched if it wasn't for my number two influence, and that is Kim Jong-Yi. You probably all know Kim Jong-Yi. He is the current art god among the world of men. He can seemingly create any complex thing from his mind without any guidelines or thoughts whatsoever. At the current moment, I would probably say that Kim Jong-Yi is my biggest influence, mainly just because he represents the embodiment of a goal I hope to reach and surpass one day. I don't even know what to say about his work anymore, it's just ridiculous and dumb. If I ever feel like I'm not working hard enough, I always just grab his book and it gives me a burst of energy. So at this moment, Kim Jong-Yi is inspiration incarnate for me but he's not my number one most influential artist on my art career. I'm gonna say that number one is actually Ashley Wood. Ashley Wood was definitely my favorite artist for a good part of the last decade, and I would say I still love him a lot. All of my views on impressionism and minimalism really come from just being in love with his work, and he definitely influenced the way I draw people a ton. In fact, I even started using brush pens originally because I was in love with his brushy line work. Of course, that brush pen love was later continued on by Kim Jong-Yi, but nonetheless, Ashley Wood is what got me started down that path. Alright, so I guess that's about all I have to say. I definitely had fun looking back at myself through the years and trying to figure out who influenced me the most. And I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about it, so thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my patrons! And that'll do it. All right, see you guys.